do not buy a compost tumbler. Yep, you heard me right. Do not buy one. I've got eight really big reasons why. So stick around and I'll show you exactly why I think that actually they're the wrong choice for so many people. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back. Today, I am getting controversial. And that's because I'm going to go through my top reasons why not to buy something. And it's this, a compost tumbler. Now, you may not be sure what a compost tumbler is. So what it is, is a container that's generally made of plastic, but most importantly, it's designed so that it can roll like this. By turning the container, the idea is that it mixes the compost materials inside it really well and also helps to introduce more air into it, helping the compost action happen quicker and getting you quicker compost. But I find that that's grand in theory, but the design actually has a lot of downsides. Now, I didn't buy this. I found it in a local free cycle group and I've been using it for the last year or so. So I've done the testing so that you don't have to. Now, some of you watching may have made your own homemade compost tumbler, which has designed out some of the flaws and the issues that I'm about to discuss. But for most people, this is the kind of model that you're going to find in shops. And the thing is, they are not cheap. So this isn't just me knocking a design for the sake of it and pointing out the bad points just because I can. If you're going to be shelling out your good gardening money, you want to know that it's being spent well and on a tool that's actually going to deliver. So what I hope is that this video is going to help you avoid potentially wasting your money and also give you some pointers on what you should be looking for when you're buying or designing your own composter. Okay, so let's get stuck into reason number one why you shouldn't buy a compost tumbler. And it's easy, it's cost versus capacity. If you're gonna spend a lot of money, you want to know that you're going to be able to produce lots and lots of compost out of a composter. At the minute, this retails online, this exact model, for 120 euro. Now, that is not cheap. And it has a capacity of about 200 liters which sounds impressive until you think that a standard large bag of compost that you would pick up at the garden centre is 80 litres. So really, this is only about two to two and a half times that. You've spent 120 euro and then you're going to have to make the compost. If you compare the capacity of this to, say, a standard open heap that you could either make simply by piling your compost materials up or even just putting pallets around the side of it, they have almost limitless capacity. You're limited really more by the size of the garden that you have. So you can see that this is really quite expensive, but it's going to limit you quite severely in how much material you can compost at one time. And for me, the cost versus the size, it just doesn't stack up. Okay, so on to reason two, and it's this, this little door and how difficult it is to load this unit with your composting materials. Now, this door, as you can see, is actually surprisingly difficult to open every time. And I understand that it needs to be a screw-in door so that it stays in place when you tumble the compost, but still, it is awkward, as you can see by all of the smear marks on it. And then when you finally do get it open, well, this, is the aperture that you have to get all of your compost materials into. Certainly not wide enough to tip materials into out of a wheelbarrow. If you had an open heap, it is so much easier. Or in my case, using a hot composter, it's much easier just to take the top lid off and tip everything into the top. So it leaves really only one option, which is to load the composter by hand, which isn't particularly enjoyable and takes a load of time. And by the way, if you thought that opening this thing was awkward, wait till you see me trying to get it closed. <sighs> now it's jammed. Finally, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Awkward, awkward, 
awkward. I hate it. I've just said that it's really not very easy to load this thing. Well, reason number three is that just as difficult as it is to load, it's difficult to unload as well. And that's because once you've made compost in this, it's really heavy. And it means that you can't lift the unit very easily to try and tip the compost into, say, a wheelbarrow or to carry this across the garden. So what you need to do instead is you need to lift the compost out. But to do that, this aperture is really only about 12 inches in diameter, which means you're not going to get a spade in very easily. Certainly, if you get the spade in, you're not going to be able to lift large amounts out at one time, which means it comes down to using your hands and literally getting in and scooping out the compost material, which I just find really, really frustrating. For instance, my homemade hot composter that I made, it's got a flap at the bottom that you simply pull off and you have a large space at the bottom where you can easily just dig the compost out and use it, leaving the stuff above to start to compost down and move down towards the bottom of it. So this, I'm afraid this doesn't work for me. Reason number four, and this is the real biggie for me. So the whole idea of this thing is that you're able to tumble your compost, but guess what? It is not easy to tumble your compost. And that's because if you have a small amount say half a wheelbarrow's worth, maybe about half or a quarter full of this thing, it's all right. And it's certainly all right when it's light and fluffy and you've just loaded it. But let me tell you something, as this starts to break down and you add more and more in and it gets heavier and heavier, it gets really difficult to roll. Wait till you see. <laughs> Do you see how heavy it is? <laughs> and that brings me on to the other point about what makes it really difficult to roll or tumble, and it's asymmetric load. Like anything in this case, when you have a weight that settles on one side of something that needs to turn, it makes it really awkward. And as the compost really does start to break down and settle into place, it means that you're trying to lift a weight up and over. And if you don't get it turned all the way to tumble it, then it starts to roll back. So instead, what you're left with is quite a heavy job. And let's face it, if it's this heavy and awkward to shift what is at the moment in here only about this deep, you're not going to want to stand here for five or ten minutes rolling it and tumbling it just to try and mix the materials. You're going to be exhausted. <laughs> okay, so reason number five, and it seems like a little bit of an odd one, but it is really, really relevant. And it is that as this thing gets fuller, it's harder to incorporate the materials. Now, I'm not talking about the weight of trying to turn it, like I just mentioned. I'm talking about the physical space inside this. For instance, when this thing is half full and you tumble it, it does a great job of mixing the materials through. But as it gets fuller and there's less room for stuff to move inside, it's harder to try and get everything mixed through. So that means that in my mind, if I want to have stuff that really can easily get tumbled, well, there's a whole proportion of this unit that essentially has to remain as empty space. So I'm not even getting the full 200 litres of value out of it. Okay, so we are fairly rattling through the reasons. And reason number six is related to capacity again. And it's that you can only add a certain amount for this to function correctly. So if you take an open heap, regardless of whether it's quite small or whether you keep adding to it and it gets larger, it's still going to work. If you use something like a hot composter where you load it from the top and you unload from the bottom, then it's going to keep working perpetually. But this thing, you are very much constrained by its physical capacity. And in this case, that's not particularly huge. If you start to overfill it because you've got stuff that you really need to make into compost and you pack it in, well, then you're going to reduce your airflow, which means that it's probably more likely to get kind of claggy and anaerobic and stinky. 
and it's also harder to mix because there's less room for it to move around inside. So then you're left with the situation that you are probably only going to be able to load a certain amount into this and you're going to be left with some other material. And for me, if you have something to make compost and it's not going to be suitable for the size of garden you have, it's not worth getting. So certainly if you've got a very small garden, I think this would be fine. But if you don't have a very small garden, really do consider seriously whether this is going to be a practical solution for you. Okay, reason number seven why I really do not like this compost tumbler is that you can only make one batch of compost at a time. It's not a continuous process. Because when you think about it, if you load this, say, half full with materials and it starts to break down, but then in six weeks time, you have more composting materials that you add in on top and mix through. Well, that's like resetting the timer and you're going to have to wait until those freshest materials have broken down sufficiently, even though the previous stuff that was in it will be ready sooner. So you can imagine that over time, if you keep adding more and more material in, although there's stuff that could have been in for months and months and is basically ready to go, you're limited by the freshest stuff that you put in. And for me, I just think that's really, really impractical. I don't want something that either has that limitation or that equally all I can do is put one batch of material in and tumble it until it's ready because I have a constant stream, like most gardeners do, a constant stream of composting materials that you want to turn into compost. I think this is a really stark contrast to my hot composter, which does run continuously where I can put fresh material in at the top. In the middle, there's compost materials that are midway between being fresh and being ready to go. And at the bottom, the compost material that is ready to be dug out and used in the garden. For me, this is such a huge limitation that I just find this really impractical. And finally, we are at the very last reason why I do not like this thing. Reason number eight, and it is airflow. Ironically, one of the selling points of this thing, and that's because the idea is that in a tumbler, it mixes the materials and aerates them. Well, yes, it does mix them. I don't believe it aerates them. And that's because there just isn't enough air holes on the side to keep the airflow sufficient when you're not tumbling it. For instance, this unit has no holes around the long sides and on the ends, it only has some very small holes. Now, I've tested this, like I said, for over a year now. And despite knowing a little bit about making compost and being able to make successful compost myself, all I've ever been able to make in this thing is really sticky, wet, not particularly well broken down, and certainly not very fresh smelling, anaerobic, yucky compost. Now, doubtless there is still some nutrition in it, but it's not something I like. So for me, if you're gonna buy something with the idea that it's gonna help aerate compost, it has to make sure that it does that. And in this case, it most certainly does not. Essentially, a compost tumbler is designed to give you one big benefit, the ability to easily and quickly mix and incorporate all of your compost materials together to make compost quicker. But as you've seen, actually, in solving that one problem, it creates a whole load of other problems. And hopefully, now that you're aware of them, it'll help your own buying decision. For me personally, I found that using a hot composter is the most successful method. And in fact, I've made my own homemade hot composter rather than buying one. If you want to know how to make your own, check out my how-to video here. And I'll also make sure to link my video here on how to make your own hot compost super quick and really, really easily. And until next time, see you later.